And it looks like Connor has a pr uh looks like he might be able to get some abilities off turn two. I think I saw a rare candy and a Gallade in his hand. Blade's actually a funny interaction with Stoutland, because uh with sensitive blade, you have to play a supporter to do more damage, but if Stoutland's out, you can't no. Play a supporter. No, and so you're in a weird spot where even if you are not paralyzed locked, you're still dealing 120 damage. So that's not it's even a, a knockoff if I'm correct. Yeah. And there we see the Tapu Lele from Sam, most likely getting the Bridget, the classic turn one play in standard and expanded. Uh, Tapu Lele has basically just changed the format to this type of engine. Yeah, now when I was talking earlier about there being a wide variety of decisions people can make when they constantly have access to their deck, that may be true, but due to Tapu Lele using its Wonder Tag ability, it lets you search out a supporter from your deck, you're able to get cards to set up your board, and I'm not sure 100% if he's playing it. With this list, there's a good chance he might be running a copy of Bridget. Oh yeah, he's he definitely runs two Bridget. Yeah, uh, because yeah, he, I was he about to say. forward the two Lillipups and a Raichu. Yep, and there we go. He's going to play the Bridget and get some basics here. This, however, unlike some of the harder decisions you can make, is a more scripted beginning play where players want to figure out their prizes. That's why they why they might take a little while longer on the first turn of the game, the first search of the game. However, at the same time, once you figure that out and once you get to your Bridget, the decision making is really simple. Especially with a deck like this with so many moving parts. You have the Shining Celebi, where it allows you to use your previous evolution attacks. Your Shrine of Memories, those are very important to keep your lock going. Oh yeah. And so making sure you have those kind of cards in your deck, it's very important. Even the de-evolution spray, he only plays two. Yeah, that's right. So two copies, you have to be very careful with how you manage your cards. There are a lot of cards in Pokemon that discard other cards, so as a result, it's really good play by maintaining your resources and making sure that you keep the de-evolution spray when you need it. Now, as for any cards that may loosen up a little bit of the pressure on small counts, there is Gladion from the Crimson Invasion expansion. Yeah, uh, being able to pick out a card from its prizes and putting the Gladion back in, it really gives you access to cards you won't really see, because this deck doesn't take prizes at all. Right. Its main goal is to deck your opponent out. Right, now there are some more obscure decks in the format that have that capability. There are combinations of cards that can do that. There is a recently released supporter card, Lusamine, that's able to get back multiple supporters each time you play it. All so right, There we see the yeah. Rare Candy Glade from Connor. He's going in right now, Ultra Ball, discarding a Choice Band and a Vulpix. It's the Krillia. And yeah. there's the Tapu Lele. We might see another big Sycamore here. He definitely wants to try to get some more energy. He wants to take a few knockouts as he can, because right now, Sam's not set up. Right, and this is basically his golden opportunity to do something with the game before he effectively can't have a game anymore, because the idea behind this general type of deck is to make sure that your opponent cannot play the game. It sounds a little counterintuitive, but there are decks like that, there are combinations of cards like that, and so... There we see the N from Connor off that Wonder Tag, choosing to kind of disrupt Sam's hand a little bit, because really... He got the ideal turn one except for the Tropical Beach. Yeah. He got the Bridget he needs. He's set up like he's a slow deck. He can play this long game. Correct. And because the time limit is best two games out of three, 50 minutes, he has a lot of time to deck his opponent out. So effectively, he could fall behind several prizes in this game. And by falling behind, I mean his opponent having fewer left to draw. He can get his perfect combination out, he can continually paralyze his opponent, the evolving Raichu, infinitely, and from there he could win a very long game one, similar to how Groudon would want to win a long game one from what we saw in the last game. Exactly, and from the end, Connor actually drew the double colorless energy, and we will see a sensitive blade to take the knockout on the Lillipup, And for sure, using that premonition ability, something yeah. some people kind of forget, but its utility in this deck is so 
Perfect. Oh yeah, absolutely. However, I think getting back to what you're saying about making sure you continually do the right plays when it comes to abilities, some like Tapu Lele, you only get to use them once, but other abilities like Galades, you're able to make sure that it consistently activates each turn. You have to make sure that you are not forgetting to use it. And this can get really difficult when you have multiple abilities in play. And this is the hard decision from Sam, but luckily he drew a Sycamore. His hand looked pretty unusable. He had a Rare Candy Stoutland, but a couple energy and like a De-Evolution Spray. But that Sycamore top deck really might put him ahead now. Let's see. Well, if he has the Rare Candy and the Stoutland, he's definitely in a pretty good spot this game. Uh, I would say, though, that and he really has depends. the Raichu as well. Oh, okay. So he's basically got his entire combination going on right now. Yeah, and why Sycamore to discard some cards you don't need? You can Bridget to get the other cards. We might yeah, see that's what he's doing. Yeah. Bridget for a Shining Celebi. I think the judge is reading Stoutland. Yeah, that's one of those less common cards. It's a little bit harder to find. Boundaries Crossed is one of the older sets in the game right now. Remember that this is the expanded format we're playing, which includes cards from Black and White all the way into the most recent set. There's Crimson so many invasion. cards in this format. It's right. crazy. Although, remember that Ultra Prison is not legal yet. That's still got a week or two until we're able to play those cards. So if you went to a pre-release, can't use those cards quite yet, but very soon you'll be able to play them. Alright, so there we see the Bridget, and it looks like he is getting Shining Celebi and another Pikachu. So we will see this lock in full effect right now. That's right. Now, when I was talking earlier about some of the potential cards that Connor could be playing to break this lock, there are, of course, options with disrupting status effects, where the idea behind the deck is you have the combination, the great combination between Sentinel, the ability, and the status effect paralysis. So you were able to set up situations where if you have a non-supporter oh, way... The Pikachu goes on the bench. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, and... With the Shining Celebi, its ability will allow Stalin to attack, and he's not using Wild Tackle. He's using hmm. Pickup from Lillipup. And there we see the Devil's Spray. His hand is perfect right now. He gets the Raichu back, gets the Devolution Spray back, and has a Sycamore if he needs it next turn. And he did it without Tropical Beach, too. Yeah. So if you don't know Tropical Beach, is, there's hope. All right, and there we see a Gardevoir GX come down on Connor's bench. And what can he really do? He can't play supporters. He can't draw through your hand. And there's no switch or escape rope in his deck. Mm -hmm. There's no comfy. That's a card from one of the more recent sets that prevents status effects if you have a fairy energy attached to your Pokemon. Kind Some of reminiscent of the old Vrizian EX. Exactly. Exactly. And unfortunately for Connor, he doesn't run that. I wouldn't blame him because Shock Lock <laughs> really isn't that popular of a deck. And I haven't heard of that many people playing it either here or any other regional before. Yeah, and there's the premonition. Looking at Connor's top five cards, nothing really helps him. There's a couple Pokemon <laughs> and double colorless stuff like that. Yeah, and I think now, unfortunately, since the lock is there, Connor really can't do that much. Now, when you are under a time crunch, there is always the constant nagging question of, should I concede this game early so that I have more time to play the rest of the match? And if he doesn't run any other cards to get out of this, if he can't play any supporters, then either... It's kind of hurtful because with Premonition, Connor sees his next five turns and he's like, oh, that doesn't help. No, that yeah. doesn't help. No, oh, that doesn't help either. Yeah, that's definitely one of the worst feelings when you know what your next few cards are thanks to an ability or an effect of an item or other card, but you can't do anything with them. Yeah, and this is what Sam's deck does. Mm -hmm. He plays the Raichu, paralyzes the Glade, and then pick up the Raichu with the Evolution Spray, and then pick up the Evolution Spray with Pickup. And now he's just drawing a bunch of cards, and he doesn't deck out before his opponent. Yep. That's basically the name of the game. Lather, rinse, repeat, so keep on doing this. You Make sure you don't make a mistake if you're in Sam's position. Sam is a very experienced player, so I highly doubt that's going to happen. But you have a lot of repetitive actions over and over and over again now. 
these repetitive actions, even though you know what they are, you have to do them in a timely, lively way, or else you may be potentially hit with a slow play penalty where you might be playing too slow and so that might cause problems for the game however everybody's trying to play their best here everybody's trying to play their liveliest and so once sam is doing these plays over and over again he has to make sure that he has a good pattern of what he's doing but he has to be careful he has to be very careful not to accidentally do something out of order yeah exactly and there we see another er, uh, stoutland come down on the bench Sam is fully set up, just drawing multiple cards, and his hand went from just being those three cards to like seven cards now. Sitting pretty, turns are going by fast, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's a way for Connor to actually come back right now. Yeah, and if you just saw what Sam did, sometimes when both players communicate exactly what's happening and they totally understand, they might skip a step here or there. That's, again, to respect pace of play. And Connor yeah. is like, yeah, I cannot do anything. This lock is too much for me. And decides to concede game one. Mm -hmm. Hoping game two will fare better for him. Basically, he's hoping, all right, if Sam doesn't get Stoutland out, I'll be good. Yeah, pretty much. You know what? We talked a lot, but that's basically what it comes down to is, does he get the Stoutland out? If so, he's probably going to win. If not, then maybe not. And... That's a thing with these stage two decks. Even with Connor's deck, there's a lot of moving parts. Rare candies, making sure you have the right stage two or the stage one when you need it. And it kind of breeds a little inconsistency. That's where Sam's deck with the four beach comes in handy. Oh yeah, for sure. Now, there are some more awkward ways that you could counter Sam's strategy because remember, Sentinel only shuts off supporters. They do it does not shut off items, it does not shut off abilities. There are many other ways around it, and if this deck were ever to become really, really popular, there's always an out to it. So you could, for example, play one of the most common, one of the oldest item cards in the history of the game, Switch. Switch could let you get out of it. That's an item card. That's not a supporter card, so you can break out of that lock. However, normally cards like Switch and Escape Rope are not quite that popular, and for good reason. Yeah, exactly. And you also have cards like Keldeo EX with mm -hmm. its Russian ability, and even the one that's being played the most right now is Zorark with its stand-in. Being able to switch in to your active spot from your bench kind of disrupts the strategy a little bit. Oh, for sure. Although, one thing that you will probably notice with the Zorark GX decks the longer the day goes on is that there are many different versions of the deck. So the core of the Zorark GX deck, as you may have seen in the last match, is it's got a lot of HP, it lets you draw a lot of cards with its trade ability, and it's really, really good. So generally, players want to have Zorark GX in play, and they want to run that in their deck. And sometimes when they are on the cutting room floor, when they're trying to figure out the last card or two to play in the list, they might not put that Breakthrough Zorark in. It's a yeah. great card. All, almost everything with the name Zorark is really, really good, but sometimes you have to make a tough choice, and you might see a really helpful card like the Breakthrough Zorark, G Zorark with its stand-in ability not included in the list. So with Connor's deck the way he has it, not really having any obvious outs to this lock if it does get set up, is there a way for him to play this game to where he has a better chance? Well, based off the last game we saw, he basically played as well as he could. He drew some cards, he hoped that Sam didn't set up, didn't work out, and so that was it. Now, looking at what there is, unfortunately... A lot of the cards we were talking about, ways to deal with it, Pokemon abilities like Keldeo, like Zorark, item cards, ri he runs just about absolutely nothing that could get out of this lock, so one of the ways he could potentially play this really, really slowly is wait to evolve all the way, and by that I mean wait until you evolve up to your stage 2. So stage 2 Pokemon, with the exception of playing cards like Rare Candy that let you evolve instantly, you have to evolve twice to get up to it. So, from Connor's perspective, I don't know if there will be an opening, but at the same time, he could potentially evolve from his routes to a Curlia, maybe use the Curlia, and then evolve again. But that's, to be blind with you, probably not a very good play. It's not a good option. Well, we'll see if he actually chooses to utilize a strategy like that. 
or if he is just like, well, it takes a little bit for you to get the lock going, so I'm just try to run out the gates mm. and try to take as many prizes as I can and try to disrupt your setup. Oh yeah, absolutely. So even though Sam was able to win that game relatively quickly, despite what his deck does, he was playing very respectfully of his opponent's pace. His opponent was obviously playing quick. At the same time, Connor could potentially score a really fast win if Sam doesn't draw anything good. Where he has a lot of outs to bad hands, Sam does. Where he has, like we were talking about, four Tropical Beach, lets you draw cards, four Professor Sycamore. And that's crazy, because you usually don't see four Sycamore no. in Expanded, especially. Right, so S Professor Sycamore lets you discard your hand, draw seven new cards. That's normally a very good card, but you aren't quite as eager to play it, because sometimes you might discard valuable resources, and you have ways to get it back. All right, after a couple mulligans, it looks like players are ready to start game two. Remember, both players are 2-0 in this tournament right now. The largest ever regionals breaking Memphis. Mm -hmm. Not by a lot, but it did break the record. Yeah. I, I tell you what, attendance this year has skyrocketed. The game is more popular than I think I've ever seen it, and oh, I've been playing for a while. For sure, yeah. Uh, just the prize money involved has attracted a lot of people, and it's been great to see. Because so many people get to shine that they haven't before. Oh yeah, and the absolute best thing about Pokemon, in addition to all the different skills and getting to meet friends, is the fact that it's not just one game. There are a whole bunch of different games in the franchise, so there's actually a very good chance that people from Pokemon Go were drawn into the card oh, exactly, game and into yeah. the video game. Yeah, it's crazy. And here we go, Ultra Ball from Connor, turn one, getting the Ralts and passing. Starts with the Tapu Lele again. Not a very attractive spot to be in if I'm Connor, because no. I'm hoping that I can get an incredible start. I can get something attacking, maybe do something a little cheeky with an evolution. Yeah, but here we see the same play from Sam, Ultra Ball, but he actually is going for the Tapu Lele to get the Bridget for his classic turn one. Mm -hmm. And so at this point... Only thing bad about Sam's start is he started that Alolan Grimer. That's right. Now, one thing that would be a really interesting choice for Sam at this point is whether or not he wants to use Alolan Grimer's Super Poison Breath. So we were talking about there are multiple status effects in the game, not just this paralysis effect. Paralysis lets, makes it so that your opponent cannot do anything with their active Pokemon, except attach more energy to it and pass. But... Well, Lolan Grimer has poison as an, a potential effect for its super poison breath, and at that point, Sam would be doing damage with a damageless deck. Yeah, exactly. It could give him access to a few prize cards that he might need later on, or it might even screw up the lock, because someone he wants to lock up in the active is Tapu Lele. Mm -hmm. it, like, can't evolve Tapu Lele, so it's going to be paralyzed for a while. Yeah, and this is a spot where some players might go for something a little a little weirder. They might go for the Super Poison Breath here. I'm not going to predict exactly what Sam's going to go with, but in spots like this where there is a very so-called cute play you can make, it would be cute to Super Poison Breath and potentially draw some prizes with the deck. But Sam might be best off just sticking with his game plan, locking his opponent down completely, and taking the game from there. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing this Alolan Grimer is going to affect is Sam's bench space. Choosing to get three Lillipups with the Bridget means only one Pikachu in play. So it might be kind of a liability if he gets knocked out. He might lose the lock for a little bit. And there we see the pass. And again, the Alolan Grimer has three retreat. So it's going to be stuck up there for a little bit unless Sam could do something. Right, now... One very difficult spot about Alolan Grimer having so much retreat is that the best situation for this deck to be in is that its Stoutland is in the active position, not just for Sentinel, but for Lillipup's first attack. So you don't have those in the active position, your deck really isn't working, because remember, the idea behind Shock Lock isn't just paralyzing, There's you have to find a way to get that infinite paralysis going, and you can't do that unless you're attacking with Lillipup, so you could be in a spot where your lock becomes a little bit shakier. Exactly, and as we saw last game, he had the Shining Celebi to help him out, being able to use pickup from Lillipup, but 
with his bench full, he might have to try to find Shrine of Memories, and then that gets kind of dicey if his opponent has a counter stadium or a field mm-hmm. blower. And we actually see the Ultra Ball for the Gardevoir GX, Rare Candy, and then a Colrus for six. It does look like he got a few energy. He might be able to start attacking thanks to Secret Spring, but no, he chooses to pass. It's attaching the two energy, and now it's on to Sam to see if he can actually get this lock going. He drew an Ultra Ball for the turn. And it looks like there's a Rare Candy in his hand, too, so he could get the Stoutland, but it's a little bit more up in the air whether or not he's going to get that Stoutland back. He his whole hand if he gets the Stoutland. Yeah. So I, he's probably just going right. to go for maybe a Herdier would be pretty good. I don't know which items he has in his discard that might help. Right, and it depends on the one last card in his hand, because unfortunately, discarding that Rare Candy means that it's going to be a little bit more awkward to get that Stoutland into play. The odds aren't as good. Exactly. But... But thanks to Herdier and its ability to get items from the discard, it's like, uh, okay, I'll get Rare yeah. Candy later on. Yeah. But again, it goes back ultimately to the last card in his hand, if it's something... It can, it's a Sycamore. Can, it's a Sycamore, yeah. okay. So if it's a Sycamore, then... There are a couple more options to work with. I'm not going to predict exactly what he's going to do here. Oh, and he gets an Ultra Ball, and he just gets rid of it. Discards it with the Sycamore. Yep. Sometimes you just can't really take advantage of some of these really great abilities, so exactly. you got to do the next best thing. And that's where we talk about all these moving pieces in this lock deck. You need to really have the cards at the right time. So off the Sycamore, it seems he got... Maybe he looks like a Stoutland and a Herdier. He could bring back the Rare Candy and Rare Candy into the Stoutland, but it's kind of wasting resources a little bit. And we see him just pass. So here's a Rescue Stretcher from Connor, putting a Rangaroo back in the deck. Kind of just like, well, that's another card in my deck. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I love decks like Shocklock because it is just such an out-there strategy. It requires a lot of creativity to build in the first place, and it takes a lot of skill to use it before you get me, to the point where you're constantly doing the same things over and over again. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of uh, Sableye Garbodor. Right, where Sableye Garbodor has kind of the same idea behind it, only Sableye is constantly getting back items. It has ability lock as part of its effect. It doesn't have supporter lock, but more or less it's the same idea, only the shock lock deck, the combination of Stoutland and Raichu, might be a little bit friendlier to the current format. Yeah, and looking through Sam's deck, I actually don't see a way to get Grimer out of the active. Doesn't look like he actually plays Guzma. Oh, he has two AZ. There we go. Okay. And he actually just played the AZ. Yeah, he read our minds. Perfect. All right, AZ bringing up the Grimer. You don't want that in play. It's yeah. very much a liability. Bringing up the Herdier. We'll most likely see Stoutland this turn, and he'll get the lockout. Looks like it. He'll. Looks like he might be able to get multiple Stoutland into play now. That's exactly what you need. And now, he only needs a Shrine of Memories or a Celebi. There's the Raichu paralyzing the Tapu Lele. So all this left is pass. Yeah. It was a smart play on Connor's part not to attack the Grimer for multiple reasons, but it looks like he might be caught in the loop now, and now that he's playing an Ultra Ball, that's fewer cards in his hand, which means... Oh, he, he's been Sycamoring, like, every turn. Oh, yeah. yeah, so he barely has any deck left at this point. There's a Glade off the Ultra Ball. Rare Candy, Glade. So now both of his Ralts have turned into Gardevoir and Glade. Sam showed us the lightning energy, two lightning energies in his hand, so he's basically there. He, if he doesn't have it, he'll probably draw the evolution spray very, very well, so soon. So unfortunately for Sam, he did, yeah, he has nothing right now. Yeah. Energy and a couple useless cards in his hand. Yeah. And without being able to de evolution spray the Raichu, he can't de evolution spray next turn and evolve it again. Exactly. And on top of that, he doesn't have a second Pikachu in place, so there's a pretty good chance that he will not be able to. Pull right. off any this is Connor's moment to shine, and he just passed. He's trying oh, to build man. up enough energy to take a one-hit knockout on Stoutland. And there's another premonition, and his top five is filled with energy, so he should be good. And here we go. Retreat to the Gardevoir GX. Infinite Force for the knockout on the Stoutland. 
And hope for the best. And now, Sam draws a de-evolution spray, but that's it. His hand isn't looking too hot right now. The evolution spray, he could be choosing maybe the Herdier, get back an item card for later. And that's what he does. Right, I think it probably works out okay to do that play because now that he has two bench spots open, he can bench a second Pikachu if he wants to get paralysis out a little bit quicker. And at the same time, he can get that item he needs to get out of the spot because he was only about a card or two away from the perfect lock. But unfortunately for him, one or two cards being away from the perfect lock yeah, again, means a loss. A card that's been missing from this whole scenario has been Tropical Beach. Mm -hmm. Playing the full four, and we have not seen one in this two games so far. We do see Counter Catcher, a card that isn't really played that often. And bring up the Glade, but Connor has the Guzma to respond. Taking the knockout on the Raichu. No other Pikachu in play. And it's looking very good for Connor right now. It is looking very good for Connor, but one thing I would say is that remember that the deck can win when it's down by five prizes. So he could have one prize left. That's still enough for Sam to come back, get everything into play, and take the game back. Because all you have to do, get the infinite paralysis lock going, and you're good. All right, so we see the Herdier getting back Ultra Ball. This will most likely be finding a Tapu Lele, I believe, just so he can Try to get more set up. Right. Discarding the Grimer that has plagued Sam so far in the beginning turns. I think double Rescue Stretcher. Or no, Super Rod. And a Rescue Stretcher in his hand. He had all of his Recover cards in his hand and not much else to play with. Nope, and at this point he is... I'm not even... Okay, so there's the Lele as you predicted, and Lele he's going to be drawing that. Yep, he's going to be drawing that new hand, hopefully hitting what he needs. Fortunately for him, he's got a lot of recovery in his hand that he's playing right now. So you notice he played at the same time a Super Rod and a Rescue Stretcher, and six cards he needs back in his deck. He right, plays a limited amount of energy. Granted, his attack only costs one, but he's gone through a few of them, and then of course the whole Stoutland line. Right, now, Rescue Stretcher is a pretty interesting card where sometimes you can put something back into your hand, or you can put more things back into your deck. Now, normally, a bird in a hand is worth two in the bush, that's what they say, but in this case, in Sam's case, it's better to have them in the deck as opposed to in the hand, because that means he gets more resources, and he isn't losing anything by playing that Sycamore, so... So, off the Sycamore, he got a couple basics, which he needs. He has that Pikachu... Yeah, but we've only got that one Pikachu, so... And I don't think I saw a useful supporter in his hand. I think I only saw Bridget. Right, and, and so... if Connor has access to another Guzma to take out this Pikachu on the bench, it'd put him so much farther ahead. And there it is, Versus Seeker for the Guzma. Bring up the Tapu Lele, retreat, infinite force for the knockout. Connor's down to three prizes now. And Sam's really on the back foot here. Oh, yeah, absolutely, and... We go back to the same problems we've been having all game for Sam's board. We have only one Pikachu at a time, if any. And on top of that, we are constantly lacking for the complete lock. We are lacking for one or two pieces to it. And so Sam's a very patient player. He's a player who's used this deck before. So he may be thinking in the back of his head, do I want to concede this game? However be honest he knows the deck better than i do so it's possible that he could feel totally confident and he could be saying to himself yeah you know what i just need to draw one or two cards how, how many guzmans does my opponent really have like... <laughs> <laughs> well apparently none right now because he's got sentinel in play exactly and here we see looks like we saw a lucamine there oh yeah lucamine a card that has kind of taken over in these Lock decks, uh, very popular in Waylord. Oh yeah, and even the Dual Brains Magnazone Zork that you wrote about, uh, being able to just recycle through a bunch of your cards. It's been a pretty cool card to play. Yeah, in case you've been tuning in this entire time, I was talking earlier about how Lusamine is a single supporter card, one card you can play a turn that lets you get back two copies of supporter cards or stadium cards or a combination thereof. So basically. 
every time you play it, you're getting two cards back. They're cards that let you shuffle your hand back into your deck. So what being able to run two Lusamine means is infinite cards. And running it with a Lillipup especially means even more infinite cards. <laughs> exactly. And we just saw another quick knockout on the Stoutland from Connor last turn. And now Sam starts his turn with just the Bridget. Granted, he does get a Pikachu, but he doesn't have many of those left. Oh yeah, I mean, even with the Super Rod and the Rescue Stretcher, he is definitely in a bind here where... Well, maybe he's not in too much of a bind because he's yeah, only... Thankfully, with the Shining Celebi, he will be able to pick up and get anything he wants from his deck. That's right, and at this point... No more Guzma, so the Pikachu's safe for a turn. Mm -hmm. we, we could be seeing the start of the lock. Like you said, this deck yeah. could come back from five prizes down, even. Yeah. And that's the thing in Pokemon, is you may be in a really bad spot, it may look like a bad spot, but if you can find a way to come back, you can totally dominate the game. And like we saw from the last game, Connor doesn't really have too many outs around this. He doesn't have any way to address being paralyzed, so... Where's the Pokemon catcher when you need it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. He does take the knockout, though, so down to one prize. Wow. And this is where Sam has to play perfectly. He needs to keep the lock going for the entire game because this Gardevoir GX can knock out anything on his board. Exactly. And so at this point, he is thinking very hard about what cards to discard. There's the first Tropical Beach we see, and it's yeah, discard. Yeah, so how much for that? Well, I mean... Eventually drew into them, so they're helping, in a way. <laughs> All right, Ultra Ball. Looking for just another Stoutland, or even the Raichu. Uh, trying to find the, collect all the pieces he needs to complete this puzzle. That's right, and it's not a puzzle of time, it's just a basic, normal puzzle where you have to <laughs> get Stoutland into play, you have to get Raichu into play, yeah, and you, you have to get keep... cards back, though, from the yeah. discard, so it's kind of. <laughs> kind of, yeah. All right, there we see the Stoutland coming down to the active spot. Sentinel is active again. That means Connor will not be able to play Guzma, and we'll see if Sam gets the Raichu and the Evolution Spray to try to start this lock. Yeah, I definitely like the way that both players have been approaching this matchup, where even though Connor really does not run that many outs to this deck, if any, he's playing it very confidently, he's dedicated himself to a old strategy, usually Gardevoir GX decks do not want to pile on a bunch of energy and become vulnerable to an attack, but remember, Sam does not deal right. damage. There we see the Sycamore from Sam, did he get the Raichu? It I looks like an Ultra Ball, so... As long as it's in his deck, he has access to it. Well, he needs the Ultra Ball, but he also needs a way to paralyze the next turn, too. So if he doesn't have both of those, that then it could true, be game yeah. over. And I don't see a Devolution Spray in his hand. And You're even right. another Pikachu as well. You're absolutely right. I only see a bunch of Professor Sycamores and not that much else. There is the Paralysis from Raichu. Again, like you said, he's missing that last piece, the de-evolution spray. He could get it back right now, but that doesn't help him for next turn. That's right. Now, if he were running some other way to... And there we see a quick pass. Players know time is crunching down, and There's Sam a concession. does not have it. And folds to this oh giant my gosh. GX. I, I tell you what, I don't blame him at all for doing his best in that game, trying to draw into his cards. He always had a chance that entire game, and it is so frustrating to get into spots where you were just so close, and you know that if you had X card, if you had the one card that you needed, you'd be able to win. And in Sam's case, that was true, because in game two, he needed a second Pikachu, or he needed a de-evolution spray, did not hit him, lost game two. Wow. And it's crazy because usually you c kind of concede early on if you're having a really bad like match, like you're not drawing well. But with Sam's deck, if being able to come back just like that, it really kind of is a disadvantage when you lose first game. Because then you're like, well, I have to play this game out because there is a possibility yeah. I can win. So then, we're, well, we're going to go to game three since I lost. So now time's even worse for me. And this lock isn't a fast lock. Right, now, game one went by so quickly because 
Sam made it very abundantly clear that he had the lock and he had everything that he needed for it. And Connor accepted that. He knew that Connor knew that if he wanted a chance to win the series, he needed to concede quickly. And so, unfortunately, the second game was forced to go on for a very prolonged period of time. It took a long time to play out. Neither player really incentivized to concede. But let's see how this game three plans out. Exactly. And Sam is definitely looking for that early tropical beach, which he hasn't been able yeah. to find. And, oh no, I see the Grimer. Oh, <laughs> thank goodness, he has the Pikachu to start with. You know, he, he was kind of thinking oh. a little bit there, oh, maybe, maybe I should start with the Grimer again, you know, j just to give myself a challenge. Oh my gosh. All right, huh. Sam is getting to go first since he lost game two. And there it is, Ultra mm -hmm. Ball. Then the classic turn one play again, Lele for Bridget. It really just helps out all these set effects immensely. Oh, absolutely. And when you are in a time crunch like this, it definitely helps to have your first turn of a game mapped out so well, where both players want to be able to finish this game, but you have to do it before time runs out, because the rules work in game three of a best two out of three series. If you have not by the additional three turns added at the end of time, neither player's won, in Swiss rounds, in these basic rounds before the top eight, then you're stuck with a tie. And there we see Sam just plop down five <laughs> cards onto the table. He's really just shortcutting. Yeah. Because both players know, like, oh, there's not much time left. This game's going to go for a while. So I'll get this Tapu Lele wonder tag for the Bridget. Bridget for these two Lillipubs and the Pikachu. Which is close to a perfect setup and from And he has the Tropical we see Beach! The tropical Beach. First time of this match. One of the key cards for this deck, being able to draw until you have seven cards. Even, even though it ends your turn, you don't really attack for a couple turns. So oh, yeah. it's perfectly fine. Yeah, and you can always discard them later, so they aren't wasted. Exactly. So we see a big Sycamore from Connor discarding quite a few cards. But it doesn't look like any of them are no of note in this matchup. It does get the double colorless on the Ralts. And it's paralyzing the Pikachu. Wow. Uh, all right. <laughs> there were a couple different other approaches he might have been able to tech. I don't know how big Connor's hand is right now. If he had less than seven cards, he could have potentially Tropical Beached. And there we see is this, uh... Gladian okay. being able to take a card from Sam's prizes and replace it with the supporter itself. And to be fair, this is the only time he's going to be able to do it. So we'll see six cards. He's like, okay, I can get one of them. But these five... I know I can't have him for the rest of the game. Oh uh, yeah, and th then we see that Gladion going into the prizes, as it should. Un unlike most cards in the game, unlike most items and supporters, you do not discard your Gladion. The Gladion goes back into the prizes to replace the prize and you just drew. Otherwise, think, it'd be too unfair. I love this card interaction because I think it's the first time where you actually offer your opponent to cut your prizes. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. And so, normally when your deck goes down to about six cards, if you've played any card game, you know that it's really awkward to shuffle a six-card deck. Yeah. It's, like, even with sleeves, even with the size of that being about twice as much, it's still really awkward because you're just trying to get those cards down there, and... All right, so we do see Sam rare candy the Stoutland, but not have a follow-up play getting the Pikachu out of Paralysis, anything like that. So he just passes with a Tropical Beach, so he draws three cards. Now the action's on Connor. He really wants to try to get rid of these Pikachus, but with two being in play, the lock might come a little sooner, and so time's not on his side. No, not at all. There's an Ultra Ball for the Gardevoir GX and the Rare Candy, and he has been hitting these Rare Candy Stage 2s on turn 2 every game. It's been perfect for him. And he needs it to be perfect for him because of how this matchup works and how this interaction goes. Now, in Sam's case, he has to win his old-fashioned way. His method of winning is decking out the opponent. And unfortunately for Sam, that takes a while. So even if he gets the perfect lock going, there's going to be a dilemma where Sam is going to be doing what he did in game one. He's going to be flashing those two cards. He's going to be taking a shortcut, which his opponent understands perfectly, saving time. But then the ball is on Connor to make his plays and to choose what he needs to do and how that interacts with the remaining time that we have left. 
There's the Herdier getting the Ultra Ball from the discard thanks to its ability. Discarding Tropical Beach. I, I think it's kind of funny. His hand had multiple Tropical Beach in, <laughs> in it. And so it's kind of like, well, I'll show up all at once instead yeah. of like throughout the match. Yeah, so he, I mean, it, it, it evens out a little bit where you get none in game one, you kind of get one in game two, and then you get them all at once in game three. <laughs> yeah, and then there is the Raichu being placed into his hand. He will have the Paralysis Lock this turn. It'll be interesting to see if he has the de-evolution sprite or another Pikachu to put on the bench, though. And it looks like he does the de-evolution sprite from Evolution. It's kind of <laughs> easy to point out from all these newer cards because it has that old-style art. Right, in Evolutions, they did kind of a retro There's the Shrine of Memory, cards from the old so set. he will be able to use Lillipup's attack to get the De-Evolution Spray back in his hand. And here, boys, we have a lock. A perfect lock. A shock lock. <laughs> and to be fair, if Connor does have a way to get rid of the stadium, he can try to disrupt it a little bit, but looking at his list, there's no Field Blower... Nope. And a no counter stadium. This is the lock. So now Connor just he has to hope for a tie or for Sam to mess right. up. Right. Right. Now we're in an interesting spot here where Connor, as a player trying to advance himself into the next day of play, he needs a match point. You get three match points for a win, you get one for a tie, and none for a loss. So we're in a position where it's more efficient, it's better overall if one of these players wins, because this is early in the day. We still have six more rounds to go after this, so this is very early to tie. It would be better if one of them wins as opposed to ties, but to advance himself, Connor is hoping for a tie. He's hoping for something to happen or for something not to happen a little slower. And this is definitely the hardest lock Sam could put on to Pikachu now, so even if he messes up for a turn, he can correct it next turn. Right, and on top of that, the way that Sam is playing this shortcut, he's fanning the two cards over and over and over and over and over again. And AZ picking up the Tapu Lele, the liability on the bench. And there's not much Connor can do. To be fair, he could play cards to take time, but it's that spirit of the game. You're really hoping, like, I, I know I'm going to lose, but I'm just, I'll, I won't take a lot of time and hope for a tie, but right yeah. now, there's no way I can win. That's exactly right. There is no way that Connor can win with his list. It's just a fact. He can only hope that Sam makes a mistake at some point. That's not invalid. You and hoping Sam's your turns are lightning fast. No pun intended. Yeah, now, normally it's a very good idea to play out every single point in your turns, but in Sam's case, he's a very experienced player, his opponent's experienced, so they can make that interaction work. <laughs> So anybody watching who isn't quite too He's experienced... He's just revealing the cards now. This is great. Exactly. He keeps on <laughs> looping it, just like in the first game. Not even looking at his hand. He's just like, yeah, I only need these two cards. Yeah. And he's just going to leave them flipped up. Now, like I said, this is normally not a very good idea. Normally, judges would not be happy with this. But in this case, this is a special exception where there's a time crunch. Both players understand it. There is spirit of the game going on. You see nothing of Connor where he's just, hmm, I need to think for a little while. No, none of that. He's thinking about his plays, which are none. And so as a result, it only takes him about a second or two to do his turn. And this is where Connor going super aggressive with those Sycamores in the early game it really limits him because usually against deck out strategies, one card that is great is N. But with Sentinel being active, you can't play N. Correct. There's really no way around it at this point where he would have to have some sort of non-supporter method of preventing himself from decking out. And I just don't see that in his list. I haven't seen that on the board today. It looks like if this game finishes by time, then Sam is without a doubt going to win. And now the thing is, like, will will Sam deck out before Connor? So he might actually have to play a little bit of cards. And if he has to end, that'll make this go on longer. And I don't know if he wants to do that. Absolutely not. Although, I think they'd help. I'm not exactly sure what's going on here where they're trying to... Sam, stop doing his constant shortcut. Well, he only has two cards left in his deck right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he's got a little bit more to think about. Where, remember that he has and the there's the card. Shauna. Oh, a classic card because I think. And there we go. <laughs> so it's like, all right, you got a you got a bigger deck than me. All right, I lose. 
And there we have it. Sam Chen takes game three from Connor Lavelle with a crazy deck. Oh, yeah. Now, it's it's not anything too new like we were talking about. It came out a few months ago, but it's a very uncommon deck, to say the least. It's not Zorak GX. It's not your run-of-the-mill super popular Pokemon. It's not your super popular card. It is definitely obscure, at least at the moment. But if Sam keeps the streak going on, then this could be a very, very good weekend for him, and it could be a really, really great weekend for the deck. Yeah, basically, it's one of those decks where you really have to call the metagame right. Exactly. Because if people are playing these certain cards that counter your deck, 